Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 103 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Um, I'm recording this on Sunday at about 5 p.m. before the radio show starts later at fucking dude. My radio show starts from 10 p.m. until midnight. I'm going to be asleep. That's five hours from now. I feel fucked now. I'm just going to start one of the biggest opportunities I've ever had on radio asleep. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I had a good week. Um, saw Black Panther recently, and man, that movie was fucking sick. I really enjoyed that shit. Have you seen Black Panther yet? If you haven't seen it, go and see it. Uh, you know what? Of all of out of all the fucking noise that people made about how this is this is like a giant, uh, it's a it's a massive fucking socially progressive thing to happen for everyone. It was just a good. You know what? And with all the noise that people made about it, how it was revolutionary and how it's going to change the world. I was going in thinking, oh, fuck, if this is a movie that hammers in how bad white people are and how good everyone else is, I'm just going to hate this shit. But you know what? They didn't need to do that. It was just a fucking awesome movie that happened to be like 90% African actors. And that is how you fucking do it. You don't need you don't need to fucking bring about equality by shitting on everyone else and making a giant ham-fisted point about it. Just make an awesome movie with a bunch of black people in it. And I was like, "Fucking this is cool. That's how you do it." You don't want to leave a movie even if in, even if you're on the team on on the team with the people preaching. You don't want to leave a movie thinking, "Oh yeah, I'm so correct." Or, oh, yeah, I am a piece of shit. You just want to leave a movie being like, oh, yeah, saw a bunch of black dudes in costumes beat the shit out of each other and do cool tricks. That was fucking mad. Then that's that's exactly how I left. And I was like, ah, oh, sweet. Cool. And you know what? It actually made me... Because, like, watching... As, as a white guy, right? I've never... It made me realize I have never seen a movie that's not mostly white people. I don't think I've ever seen them. Like, obviously, you know, Japanese movies and shit from Japan, mostly Japanese people, but I've never seen, like, a, a movie made by the mainstream movie industry that is mostly non-white people. And it made me think, fuck. I mean, this was fine. And I liked the movie, but I guess it gave me perspective. Do you know what I mean? For For... For African people and people who aren't white, it gave me a bit of perspective to go, oh yeah, this movie was good, but if this was the only type of movie I could see, I wouldn't really connect with the movie industry either. Do you get what I mean? Like if every single movie was like Black Panther where there were only African actors and there were like no white people in it, I would be like, hey man, this movie was good, I, I like the story, but where's the movies for me? Where are the movies that are for me and about me that I can really connect with rather than liking a story but not really getting the cultural significance of it? Do you get what I mean? So, yeah, I, th I thought Black Panther was really cool and I did think it was a very important movie to make. Um, and it was great that they... Like, they didn't... What they did is they didn't try to make a movie uh, for black people at... Do you know what I mean? Like, they just made a fucking awesome movie that happened to be about black people and mostly have African actors. They didn't ham-fist it. They just made a sick movie. By the way, it's in Africa, so everyone's black. They didn't need to make any points about it. And even the main villain of it was like a... seemed to be like a social justice extremist in the sense that he was like, oh, everyone else has been keeping our people down so what we need to do is we need to make the rest of the world pay and uh the you know the, all of the heroes of it was like ah you're correct but putting everyone else destroying everybody else's 
countries just makes us as bad as them. Why don't we just work together with them and bring everyone up to that level rather than bringing the people on top down? That was kind of the whole movie, and I, I really did enjoy it. I thought it was fucking sick. And the fight scenes, the only thing I didn't like was the fight scenes. You know when they film them too close? Like whenever there's a hectic... I, I feel like whenever there's like a hectic choreographed fight scene where people are punching and flipping and, and they film it too close, so all you can kind of see is like an arm move from one side of the end of, of the screen to the other, and then you kind of get the the vague feeling of someone winning, but you can't actually see any details. I feel like whenever I'm watching those, those, cine, those scenes and I can't keep up with it because it's filmed too close, it just makes me think, oh, the actors must have sucked at pretending to fight. You know what I mean? Like if like in Japanese kung fu movies, it's like from foot to head, you see everything and it's all one take for like two minutes of fighting, punching, blocking and kicking. And you're like, oh, these guys trained for months just on this one fight scene. John Wick is another classic example of that where, uh, what, what, what's his fucking name? The sad guy, Keanu Reeves, <laughs> the sad guy, Keanu Reeves, uh, trained with guns and did shooting so he could do John Wick properly. And, and the fight scenes were choreographed excellently. So they didn't need to hide the bad, uh, fight scenes by zooming in really close. They just did like waste up shit. So you saw everything and it was really long takes. Whereas Black Panther, it was like, a, a half a second here, zoomed in too close, half a second there, zoomed in too far away. It was jump cutty everywhere. That was the only thing I didn't like about it. But the story, the effects, the costumes, really cool. It was like the first time I've enjoyed, a, like thoroughly enjoyed a Marvel movie since the first Avengers. Is anyone else getting sick of fucking Marvel movies? Like, I'm not, I'm not sick of seeing superheroes run around or the stories, but I'm sick of Marvel movies. You know how they, how they're like, we make a Marvel movie. So our movies have superheroes and plot, but it's not too serious. Every time something serious happens, we're going to take away the tension by some fucking comedic character doing something stupid. Like, I really didn't like the latest Thor Ragnarok movie. I liked it, but it was like, the moment the plot moved forward a step, they would do something comedically silly and drag it back two steps, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm not, I'm not watching a real movie, I'm watching a fucking cartoon. Guys, what I'm trying to say is, I'm sick of them making superhero movies for children. <laughs> they should make superhero movies for grown men like me that are very serious, not fun at all, that I can lose myself in and become engrossed in and take very, very seriously. The next time I see a man running around in fucking tights with underwear over the top, I want to be very serious. I don't want any of this silly shit. I don't care if they're, if they're directed at 15-year-olds. I need a serious man superhero movie. <laughs> because I am an entitled fucking nerd who cannot come to terms with the fact that I'm growing up and my mediums that I enjoy are not growing up with me. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm being that cunt who's like, oh, you changed, man. You used to be cool. You sold out. But, when, but really what actually happened is you grew up so you stopped enjoying it the way that you used to. I always, I get those comments every now and then where it's like, man, you sold out. It's like, dude, no, I fucking didn't. I'm still here doing the same shit. I'm just doing it better. Man, you used to be good. Did I? Or did you used to be 17 and you liked the fucking edgy shit? Go and watch my first few videos. They are garbage. I mean, I get the appeal. If you were fucking 17, but man, they were edgy on purpose crap. There was a little bit of good stuff in there, but I think it's undeniable that I'm definitely a better comedian now doing what I'm doing. I'm doing more shit. Everything is filmed and written and edited better. I used to make fucking videos on a $100 webcam anonymously under a $20 hoodie. 
I was not good. <laughs> As like, dude, I didn't sell out. You're just not 17 anymore. You just don't find fucking... You just don't think cunt is a joke anymore. It's just a swear word to you because you grew up, man. Or whenever those like heavy metal bands, when they release a new album and all these people are like, man, you used to be better. It's like, no, you used to be depressed when you were 16. <laughs> and now you're not. That's why there's all these fucking 30, 40, 50 year old dudes commenting on Metallica albums being like, oh, Metallica used to be good. It's like, no, you're 50 now. You're fucking boring. Metallica is still sick. Go and listen to their old songs. They're still there. They're the same cunts that if, like, Metallica wrote a song that was even remotely close to Enter Sandman, people would be like, oh, you're just remaking old shit. You suck now. You're just trying to copy your old stuff. And then they try something new. And they go, oh, you've sold out, man. I used to like it better when you were doing Enter Sandman. I'm going to Google Enter Sandman because I have a fucking... <laughs> I have a very bad track record of saying titles of songs and getting it wrong. I hope this isn't this week's Eye of the Tiger. Enter Sandman's by Metallica, isn't it? Oh, nailed it. Yes, it is. I thought so. But yeah, all that, all that fucking, oh, you've changed shit, man. It's like, yes, of course a person has changed over the course of five years. I never understood that shit. Where it's like, oh, you've changed, man. It's like, yes, and so have your tastes. <laughs> My ability as a comedian has changed just as much as your tastes for comedy. I never, I don't know, all that you sold out shit doesn't fucking make sense to me. Here I am going, I get one fucking sellout comment on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to yell about it for five minutes. Meanwhile, there's 99% of all of the comments were like, yeah, go, go you, man, you, you do that radio thing, you're getting better. But I see the one thing, and I'm like, ah, I can't stop thinking about that one negative cunt, whereas everyone else is positive. But we all do that, don't we? Everybody wakes up in the morning, they do their hair, they get dressed, they go, I look fucking hot. And then you go, hey, what do you think, mum? And your mum's like, mm, don't like those socks. And then you leave the house and you go, oh, maybe I shouldn't have worn these socks. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say, guys. Stop being so negative. Says me on the on the, just about the most negative fucking podcast on the planet. Anyway, on the topic of people being wrong, all right, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, I said that I was a seven. And I got a whole bunch of comments saying that I was not a seven, saying that I was a five. A five? Excuse me. I am not a fucking five, all right? I'm a seven, and let me tell you why, okay? Because, and here's a lesson in life, all right? Because the only people who were saying that I am not a seven were men. Straight guys who don't want to fuck me. Let me tell you why I'm a seven and you're not. <laughs> I'm a seven... Even if I don't look like it, because of my prospects in life. Here's a lesson in life for you cunts, alright? When it comes to men, your physical attractiveness is about 50% of the reason wh where you happen to be on the 0 to 10 scale. Alright? And I'm a 7 because... I have a little bit of status. And that's what women respond to, all right? So all of you fucking straight guys, and men don't respond to status, generally, all right? No one wants to have sex with Jennifer Lawrence because she's a millionaire movie star. They want to have sex with her because she's like an eight. 
And if you disagree with me, all right? Dude, I could pick any, any fucking ugly male celebrity and I can almost guarantee you they have had a 9 out of 10 girlfriend at some point. Whereas, if I googled an ugly female celebrity, (laughs) you know they've got a guy that is on their level. Because guys, men are not attracted to status. We're attracted to to, I don't know, the physical scale of things. And that's why when I said I was a seven, a bunch of men were like, well, you're not a seven. To you, I'm not. But to women, yes, I fucking am. All right? Let me prove my point. (laughs) Danny DeVito, girlfriend. Where are we? Danny DeVito, girlfriend. Um, where are we? Carol King. Who's this chick? Bit of live Googling for you. Ah, here we go. Danny DeVito, girlfriend. Dude, this chick... Right, Danny DeVito, without the status, that guy is like a three. Maybe a four. I'll give him a four, all right? He's incredibly short, he's very overweight, and he's not that attractive. But Danny DeVito, he's also quite old. Danny DeVito is dating a woman who's like a fucking... Look, I'd put her at a six, all right? And if Danny DeVito, a three, can date a six, all right? Danny DeVito is actually, because of his status and his fame and his money, a fucking six. Okay? That's the the rule I'm trying to teach you fucking cunts, is it doesn't matter if you are an ugly dude. Get some status about you and you're moving up the points, okay? Take my status away from me. And I don't have, I'm not saying that I've got heaps of money and heaps of status, but I got a little bit of status. I'm not there on the money front, but I have a little bit of status, all right? People who don't understand what I'm doing sometimes think that I'm famous, which I vehemently disagree with, but it is still there. And it does have an effect. Girls pay attention to me in a way that they never, ever fucking used to before I started this shit. And that's why I'm saying, without my status, I may well be a five or a six on a good day. But, because I work hard at what I do, I'm a fucking seven. Alright? So to all you ugly cunts out there saying, Oh, you're only a five, you're only a six. Sorry to break it to you. My status makes me a seven. And if you disagree, look up any ugly old celebrity and find their girlfriend. And you will be shown that the amount of status and money you have bumps you up the fucking ladder. Prove me wrong. I dare you cunts. I'm a fucking seven. Case closed. (laughs) Oh, man. Winter Olympics is on at the moment. Man, why does not... Why do people not care about the Winter Olympics? It's the... It's definitely the coolest Olympics. Have you seen the fucking skiing? Where they go down... I don't know. Even skiing fast and doing zero tricks, I think is the coolest shit ever. And I will never do it. Because whenever I watch someone ski and they go over bumps, I just look at their knees. And I'm like, that, you're not going to be walking in like fucking two years, man. I look at them go over those speed bumps and their fucking knees bend faster and on like different angles to each other in like three times in two seconds. And I'm like, you are not going to be going upstairs when you are fucking 50. You're going to be like, I need to take the elevator because every time I move my knees, it feels like nails against a chalkboard within my own fucking body. 
But man, the Winter Olympics is the coolest shit. Snowboarding as well. Whenever I see that, I just picture myself doing it and breaking my ankles. Man, anything, any sport where you have to strap yourself in to something that isn't a helmet, fuck that. Okay? Like, if I have to... Like snowboarding, perfect example. If the first step to participating in a sport is locking your ankles onto a piece of wood, fuck that. No, thank you. Not playing that. If I can't get off the ride without undoing clips, not not playing. Like, could you imagine if you fuck at least at least in boxing or UFC, you can tap out before someone breaks your arm. If in UFC, you had to strap yourself into the opponent who was going to punch you in the head, and the only way you could stop is when you wake up, when you regain consciousness after they've punched you the fuck out so you could unstrap yourself from them. No, okay? Snowboarding, the only way to stop that is when you either... (laughs) When you either fall on your face and break your ankles or you run into a tree. That's the only way to stop snowboarding before the end of the hill. I got, ah, fuck. I got to pause this one second. Like, yeah, man. Sorry, I just had to pause. I'm back now. But man, the Winter Olympics is, is fucking, it's like the cooked Olympics. Like, the, the fucking Winter Olympics, you know what it is? It's because really, there are only like two or three actually, actual sports to do in the Winter Olympics. And that is skiing, obviously. So all of the skiing ones. So the tricks and the, and the speed skiing, right? Sport, okay? Uh, two, you got the, uh, the ice gymnastics or the ice dancing, whatever the fuck they call that, right? That, those two really good sports. Um, what else is there? And then, I don't know kind of snowboarding but that's that really fits in the skiing basically th- there's only really two really cool fucking sports in the winter olympics and i think the rest of them are just built around yeah i don't know what else can we do in the fucking snow and that's when you have curling where it's like lawn balls that that does lawn balls doesn't make the cut in the fucking normal olympics so don't try and give me snowballs all right. Don't try. Don't tell me that adding fucking ice to a sport that nobody wants to watch means that someone's gonna watch it. You can't fool me. All right. Curling, sure, it's a sport, yes, but it's not. It's not an Olympic sport, is it? No one wants to watch that shit. Like no one is like, fuck. I wish Australia hosts the Winter Olympics so I can go and see the curling live. All right, it doesn't stack up with sprinting. And you know, there are sports in the the regular summer games that are not supposed to be there cuz no like walking. Nobody wants to see a cunt walk fast. That's called running. I don't I don't want dude, I don't want to see a sport that has a speed limit. Right? That defeats the fucking purpose of a sport. I want to see cunts go faster. I want to see them lift heavier. And I want to see them throw further. That's what a fucking sport is. Fast, strong, far. If it doesn't fit into those categories, get it out of the Olympics. Curling. Alright? No one's curling super hard. No one's curling super far. No one's doing it fast. Out of the fucking Olympics. What else do we have? I've got a list here. Figure skating. Fast. Fast and strong is in figure skating. Far, not so much, but fast and strong in the Olympics. What else do we have? Snowboarding. Fast. Yes. That's in there. Ice hockey. That's punch on, so it has to stay in. <laughs> um, what else we got? The biathlon. That's just a fucking weird one, isn't it? where they get people to ski for a really long distance, and then in between each skiing event, they have to shoot shit, all right? Whatever. But 
there's a there's an element of speed and an element of distance in there, so that can stay in the fucking Olympics. All right. What else do we have? Uh, the luge. I will allow the luge on the condition that the double luge is has to be fucking out. All right. I don't want to see the doubles luge. That is a one man sport. You can't like you doubles tennis. Sure. You can put two people in a one-player game, and that makes it more exciting. Doubles tennis, yes. Doubles luge, no. All right? Adding another man into the fucking luge doesn't make it more exciting to watch. All right? The luge is where one guy gets on a fucking ice rocket and goes down a slide, and he might die. All right? That's cool. But I don't need to see the spooning luge. <laughs> The spooning luge. Someone tell me where the benefit is in adding another guy into the fucking luge. There's none. All right? I don't mind that that fucking other thing where they get into the rocket. I'm talking about where they're on the bobsled. All right? It, when, they, when two people get into the rocket, where that thing where two people, two or three people have to push it and then they all jump in the rocket, cool. That's that, I'll let that in, right? Because if, if it crashes, I get to see heaps of bodies flying everywhere. That's awesome. But if it's just two dudes laying on top of each other on a fucking bobsled, I'm sorry. No, I don't want to watch that shit. What else is there? Um, yeah, I think that I think that's about it. All right. So, yeah. So, at, at the Winter Olympics, we are cancelling the double luge. We're going to keep the normal luge. We're also going to cancel curling. And, uh, yeah, basically what I'm saying is the Winter Olympics, the only thing people want to watch is where people go down hills really fast in the snow and the fucking figure skating. Does anyone want to watch any of the other shit? Ice hockey. I'll watch ice hockey because there are punch-ons. That's it. What else do I want to talk about this week? Oh, yeah, all that fucking school shooting shit happening happening in America. You know what? With this, with this fucking school shooting stuff is... <laughs> why? Why the fuck can anyone, like... Anyone under 25 buy an AR-15? I don't know. I don't... I just don't get... I don't... I understand handguns. And if I lived in America, I would fucking have one. And I think you'd be silly not to have one. If you are mentally sound and you don't struggle with depression. Because if you struggle with depression... It's probably not a good idea to have an easy way out button in your safe at all times. Just sitting there being like, hey, maybe today's the day. I don't want to go to fucking... <laughs> I don't want to go to yoga. <laughs> I don't think we should have that, all right? But if you are mentally sound and in America... In Australia, we don't need them. But in America, I'm like, yeah, I would have a handgun for my own fucking personal safety. But I don't get, I don't get the AR-15 thing. I don't know. I don't get handgun, personal defense, sure. Assault rifle, I don't see the benefit of having an assault rifle because to me the only use for that is killing is killing humans and not and killing a lot of humans. And with this whole school shooting shit you know, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it because it's very depressing. But the the I think the fu the most fucked up thing to it is in America I don't think gun control is going to work just because it's so ingrained in their culture and all of the all of the arguments have been said oh, the founding fathers they meant uh they they didn't know what an AR-15 was <clears throat> they meant muskets we should all go back to having muskets yeah sure I get that and then on the other side is like oh. But the Second Amendment protects the First Amendment. We need guns just in case the government goes tyrannical and tries to oppress us. I actually... That's one of the agreement arguments that I do kind of agree with. Um, that would not apply in Australia because I don't think... 
the I don't think the government ever would take over Australia because there's just nothing to be fucking gained from it. You would just end up like North Korea, where the rest of the world would hate you. Like we're not like we're not a superpower in the sense that in Germany, when a guy took over and became a dictator, uh, he almost took over the world because Germany was a superpower at the time, right? That makes sense. Whereas when North Korea did it, they were just fucking North Korea. So the rest of the world were like, hey, yeah, stop being a cunt, man. Uh, I know you're not going to invade me. So stop being a cunt over there or I'm not going to sell you food. <clears throat> Whereas if it happened in America, uh, the rest of the world would just be fucked. If a dictatorship happened and a revolution happened in America, uh, it would take over the rest of the world. And, uh, and also it could happen because there is something to be gained from it. That's what I mean. Like, like Hitler came along, was like, oh, we can take over the world and I, I'm power hungry, so I'm going to do that shit. And I'm, I'm going to fucking take over the world because it's, it, that's possible. Whereas you, Australia could never take over the world, no matter how well organized or how well funded and well resourced we are. We couldn't do it because we don't have enough people, we don't have enough money, and we're, we're not in the right area. Right? Like, you could nuke Australia and it wouldn't affect the rest of the world at all. Right? We gave them Crocodile Dundee. That's what they wanted. You can nuke us and, and they're not going to miss out on anything. <laughs> no no cultures coming out of here that the rest of the world has to have. We don't have any resources that the rest of the world has to have. We And, and, and the nuclear fallout would maybe, maybe affect New Zealand. In, in which case, to the rest of the world, would just be a little bit funny. <laughs> like, ah, well, we, oh no, we lost New Zealand. Whoops. That, that, base, that wouldn't be a giant loss. Whereas, if you, if you nuke America, it'd fuck the rest of the world up. Because we'd fuck with Canada and all the countries near it. And we would all lose our main source of culture, all of our resources, and the entire world economy would crash. So if someone took over America, they would have an, they would have the option, if somehow a dictator took over America, the option would be there to spread out. That's what I'm saying. So let's say a tyrannical government came out. The argument is, oh, that's the reason why citizens have guns, to stop the government taking over. And then the counter argument to that is, yeah, but if the citizens do have guns, the government just has drones and bombs. That's nothing against the government. You're going to lose. And uh, can I just say, that is the most retarded fucking argument I've ever heard because, let's say, here's a hypothetical situation. Let's say uh, Donald Trump becomes a dictator, takes over America, uh, gets the military to start forcing people to do evil shit, and then there is a uh, um, uh, uh, fucking, what's the word? Military, not military uprising, militia uprising, right? The citizens uprise, and they use their guns. And then the government is like, uh, let's say all of New York, right? Every citizen in New York rises up against the police. There are more citizens than police, so the police m lose. What do you think the government's going to do? Do you really think they're going to nuke New York? They're going to drone their own infrastructure? No, they're not. There is no fucking way that a, ty that a government, no matter how tyrannical, would fucking bomb their own country. And not just their own country, but like, I don't know, their own infrastructure. That doesn't fucking make any sense. You've seen... What the fuck droning does to Iraq and Afghanistan? There is no way that a government is going to drone its own infrastructure to quell a revolution. Because let's say that happens, they fucking bomb the shit out of New York. They destroy all of the trains and all of the electrical systems, which you would think the militia would be controlling. Then what do they have left? They have a city that they can't feed with no power, with a whole bunch of people they now need to look after without any money to do so. Right? Doesn't make any fucking sense. So, I do understand the, the, 
Second Amendment protects the first, and that makes sense to me. And I think that the whole, oh, but guns are useless against the government, that's a dumb argument because, I don't know. If there are more citizens than police and they all have guns, government's fucked if they try and do some evil shit. Um, but I do think that there is no reason to really have an AR-15 or an assault rifle or any, any rifle that is designed to kill humans at a fast rate. I don't understand why anyone would need that shit. Um, because again... 100,000 civilians with handguns versus 10,000 police with rifles. Civilians are going to win that shit. But one argument that I think is fucking stupid is the whole we need to give teachers guns. No. Okay? Dude, if, if my teachers... In high, my high school teachers, if they had guns, I would be fucking dead. Eight times over. Do you know, do you understand how many teachers I pushed to the brink of a psychotic breakdown? Several. Every year. You want to give a substitute teacher a handgun? I made a, I made a substitute teacher cry. Three times in three months, every four weeks, I had a 100% substitute teacher cry rate. If she had a handgun, I would be dead, and you know what? I would have deserved that shit. <laughs> Do you know how much we tormented our fucking teachers in high school? One time, we had a, a, a long-term substitute teacher, which is the worst kind of substitute teacher, right? And it was for geography. No one is paying attention in geography. So you know what we did to her? Every day when she came into the classroom, we would go into the classroom before she got there and we would turn the chairs from facing the whiteboard to facing the opposite direction. Every single day. And the first five minutes of every lesson was her talking to the back of our heads, trying to get us to turn around while we played fart noises on our mobile phones. And one day, she cracked it and she was like, you know what? Fine. I am going to teach from the other side of the classroom. And she brought in her own whiteboard stuck it to the wall and started teaching and she thought she had she had us beat so do you know what we did we just turned around again <laughs> and boy oh boy did she scream now imagine if that bitch had a fucking glock 17 right let's say she had a six shooter she rocks up to class. We're all facing the wrong way. She goes to the whiteboard. All right, guys, turn around. I hit play on my fart noise phone app. She pulls out her fucking six shooter, takes out six of us. Then she pulls out an AR-15. And she's like, oh, looks like I'm the school shooter today. No, okay? You can't give teachers with guns, man. And then there's like, here's what I think you need to do. You need, in America, gun control is not going to work. So, you, un until you can fundamentally change the culture of America, which is going to take like hundreds of years. I was reading all of these stats about gun, like 70% of gun owners feel like owning a gun is an integral component to their sense of freedom. You you cannot overcome that with, yeah, but look how many lives we would save. Cunts are selfish, man. It's not going to change for like another, like generations of people. Until all of those people who are like 70% of them believe it's an integral part of their freedom, 
that's not going to change until those people are dead and hopefully they didn't instill that belief too hard on their children. That's how serious that shit is. So until the culture of America, the very fiber of what America is as a country changes, guns are not going away. So I think they just have to have armed guards in every school. And not don't give it to the teachers and don't let those fucking guards talk to the kids. But make them very visible. Because no fucking 17-year-old psychotic kid who got bullied is thinking he's going to take a gun to school and come... He, he's going to be terrified of the fucking guards. That's what I'm saying. Although, I did, I did, I have been reading recently that there was a guard at that fucking school, that, that, that one psycho shot up, the most recent one, and the guy didn't do anything. There was one guard, and he heard the kid with the fucking rifle shooting everyone, and he didn't go in. And everyone's like, oh, this guy, this guy's fucking an, an evil person, he didn't go in. And it's like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, he should have gone in, but I don't know. I, I, I think there's like, there's one, there's, there's one, it's one thing to sign up for the job and be given a little fucking handgun and be like, yeah, I'll do something if a bad guy shows up. That's one thing. But the reality is so, so fucking different, especially when they're lo they're not trained they're not milita militarily trained. Like if you're in the army, you are drilled again and again and again and you live in the army and you don't see your family and you're drilled and drilled and you become a robot and you are conditioned to follow orders no matter what and you're always doing drills and you are around people that have, that have been shot, that have killed people, that have had their friends killed. You understand the reality of it because you've been trained for four years and then there's fucking Jim who's a security guard who was given a gun, he did a fucking six-month course, and he has never, ever seen action. And then when it finally does happen, he pussies out because he hears some fucking psycho with, <laughs> with an assault rifle shooting like a, a, a bullet every second. And he looks at his handgun and goes, well, shit. I think I'm going to wait for the cops to come. Like, that's the wrong thing to do, but I can fucking understand that that thought pattern and that decision to pussy out. I don't know, man. I just think it's a fucking horrible situation. And unfortunately, I, I the, only, the only solution, and it's not a solution, is to just put fucking five, five people with guns uh, in a school. Not so much so that they will do something when it happens, but to deter it from ever happening, I think is the main thing. Um, but there's always going to be psycho cunts out there and in, in a country as, that is as big as America. I think that's what, what other like people from Australia don't seem to understand is how big America is. Like There are more people in a city in America than there are in our entire country. Or in a state. Like you could fit the entire population of Australia heaps of times into America and you wouldn't even be close. That's why nothing big ever changes there. Because as many people as there are who want to change gun control, there are almost exactly that amount of people who don't want to change it. So nothing gets done. And someone from Texas is completely different. It's like a different country. To, to someone who's born on the other side of the of America. So it's like too f Sorry, I think it paused there. I'm getting... Sorry about that. It, it does... I know it keeps pausing on the fucking podcast. I'm getting new uh, SD cards that'll arrive in time for next week. I know it's fucking annoying, but it'll be fixed soon. Yeah, I just think that um, what I was saying was like someone from Texas, completely different to someone from the other side of the country to the point where the culture and even kind of the language is... is uh, completely different if you look at the dialect man like even that is a giant difference that is not really present in any other country 
Except for England, for some reason. Someone from a different suburb can have a completely different fucking accent. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I just think that it's a very sad situation, and the only way... Because gun control is not going to change, the only way to... It won't even stop this shit from happening, but the only way to deter it from happening in those specific areas is to just have armed guards everywhere. And even then, that will just make those psycho cunts go somewhere else. Um, and that's that's the enlightening fucking part of the podcast that I'm going to end it on before we go into miscellaneous bit at the end. Uh, I'm just going to do one question because i got the radio show that I need to get to now. Um, oh, I'll speak about the radio briefly. Um, so we got uh, we, Luke and I, our show has been put on Fox FM which is a massive step up. We are going from every Sunday from 10 p.m. until midnight. It is Melbourne only at the moment, but if you want to stream it, if you're outside of Melbourne or international, just Google Luke and Lewis Fox FM. You'll be able to stream it uh, on the Fox FM website, I do believe. So um, it's a big opportunity. Before we were on Triple M Modern Digital, which is literally a station that they put you on um, so you can practice radio while there are no listeners. Um and now we're on Fox. It's the biggest station in Melbourne. Um, there will actually be listeners, and it's a huge opportunity. I mean, this is where, that's where Hamish and Andy are, or were, until they left. Uh, at the moment now, it's Dave Hughes, Hughesy and Kate. Um, yeah, it's like the biggest network in Australia in terms of commercial radio. Uh, very big opportunity, and I'm very excited for it. We can finally do phone calls. Uh, which is something we haven't we haven't been able to do on Triple M Modern Digital. So going forward, the podcast will come out Sunday mornings from now. So I'm going to change the day that I record them to probably a Thursday or a Friday. So if you want to get it on Patreon early, you'll be able to because now I've been doing them on Sundays. But that's going to change because the radio schedule's changed. And then I think um, I'm going to move video releases from Thursdays to Tuesday. That's why there hasn't been a video this week because I was like, ah. Oh, Instead of killing myself to get it out on Thursday, I'll just delay it a few days, put it up on Tuesday, and then it's kind of not a week late. It's more like a few days late. But anyway, I know you can't going to yell at me for it, but every Tuesday is when videos are going to come out now, and the podcast will come out Thursday, Friday, if you're a Patreon supporter. Sunday's for everybody else still, Sunday morning. Um, and then you'll be able to listen to us very, very late at night on uh, Fox FM, 10 p.m. until 12 p.m. The podcast for Luke and Lewis is going to stay the same. It's the same feed. Uh, it'll just be Triple M Mono Digital for three days, then Fox. But it's the same. It's the same fucking show. We're just hoping that we'll be able to do phone call segments on Fox. But we'll see. It is 10 p.m. until midnight. Maybe no one's listening. We don't really know. But very excited for it. It's a huge opportunity uh, and a big step up, as always, um, for what we're doing. All right. Let's do this question. Um, uh, where are we? Where's my fucking emails? Uh I request permission to re-answer one of the questions you got last episode. Here we go. I'm about to get fucking corrected. G'day, cunt. My name's Rebecca, but you can call me Beck for short. All righty, Beck for short. <laughs> Dad jokes. Uh, you all just unsubscribed. Hear that? I just heard everyone fucking unsub. <laughs> In episode 102 of your podcast during the weekly suicide attempt, aka miscellaneous bit at the end, you and Jazz answered a question from a girl named Samantha who was looking for advice on how to make friends despite the fact that she is shy and comes off as intimidating. I've dealt with similar issues myself as I have mild social anxiety. I've also been told I come off as unfriendly and uninviting at times and I was a little disappointed to hear your and Jasmine's answer to her email because basically all you said was just stop being shy and it'll fix all of your problems. Yes, that was my answer. Um, I strongly believe that social skills can be learned. Um... And de there's definitely an element of innate ability. I am not the best person in social situations. I often offend people and come off as an asshole. But in high school, uh, up until year 12, I had no friends because I was unable to make them. It didn't come naturally to me. I was very shy and I didn't know how to talk to people. But I learned those skills by researching it on the internet I learned how to talk to people. I put myself in uncomfortable situations um, instead of being shy. I, just, I, I made myself go and talk to someone. And that to me is stop being shy. Get out of your own head. Go and talk to someone. 
be fucking shit at it and you will get better at it. Um, so, but this chick thinks, thinks I'm wrong. Let's uh, hear what her answer is. I understand what you were trying to say, Lewis, that she should just be more confident and she would make friends. And in a way, you were right. But the thing is, most shy people don't know how to be confident. This is another thing that I struggled with as well. Um, that maybe I didn't explain properly as well. There is an element of not knowing how to be confident because, again, it's a fucking skill. I used to be scared of going on stage. Now I'm not because I learned how to not and I had confidence in myself. I gained confidence. Confidence is not an innate thing. People are like, oh, how are you so confident? It's like, dude, I wasn't fucking born with it. I learned this shit. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize is confidence and social things you know, social, anything is, can be learned. Obviously, you're never going to be as good as someone who was naturally good at it and built from there, but anything can be learned and developed upon. People just start uh, higher and lower than others. All right. Most shy people don't know how to be confident, so to help Samantha and any other lonely cunts, I've come up with a step-by-step -step method on how to make friends based on my own personal experiences. Step one, Scope out your target. Look at everyone you see in your general vicinity on a regular basis, whether you know them or not, and choose one person or perhaps a group of people who you wish to start a friendship with. I suggest going for people who also seem shy or don't have many friends either, because then at least you have something in common. This is, this is a good tip. I like this tip. Um, step two. Uh, study your target. Watch them closely. Try to find out what they like or don't like. Maybe see how they act around other people they're comfortable with. This will all help with the next few steps, but don't be a creep. Um, step three, locate your target. This is getting weird. All right, so basically, I feel like this whole thing is going to end up as exactly what I said, but in a different way. Uh, step three, locate your target, decide on a good time to chat with them, find out where they would usually be during that time. For example, if you're in high school, a good time to talk to them would be during lunch. If you can find out where they usually go during lunch, like the library or whatever, you can use that information later. Step four, choose your weapon. This is where step two comes in. Decide on a good topic to talk to them about. Don't just say, how, hey, how's it going? And then have nothing else to say after that because that almost always leads to an awkward silence even if the topic seems weird and out of nowhere. As At least it's something. Yeah, dude, this is just ending up to be a very long explanation of pick someone to talk to and then talk to them which is essentially stop being a shy cunt and talk to people. Step five, launch your attack. This is a scary part, but basically all you do is talk to them. There we go. That's exactly what I've been saying. Just casually sit beside them and say words. You may need to listen to something like Hall of Fame or Eye of the Tiger for motivation first if you need it. And if this step somehow fails and you make a fool of yourself, then who cares? Again, that's what I said. <laughs> That person will probably forget about the whole thing anyway. Just keep trying. Eventually, you'll get the hang of talking to people. This is exactly what I fucking said. Step five, step six, repeat step five until target is acquired. Continue talking to the person until you both have become comfortable around each other. It could take a matter of weeks or months, and it may be extremely awkward at, at first, but eventually you'll find it e easier to talk to people, and you'll officially become friends. Step seven, email Lewis so he can update us on whether or not you made any friends. Thanks so much, Lewis. If you read this on the podcast, I hope it doesn't come off like I think you're stupid or anything. I just wanted to share my knowledge on the subject. Have an incredibly abundantly shit one. Uh, yeah, this is kind of what I've been saying, but explained in a much longer, more in-depth way. Um, yeah, that basically just said, talk to people. Uh, and none of that was wrong. It was just explained in a different way. It's what I've been saying the whole time. Look at someone... See if you can figure out their interests and fucking give it a go. You're going to be shit at it and then one day you won't be. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to say to that email other than, yes, that's exactly what I've been fucking saying. So, I don't know. Thanks for emailing me, Beck. Uh, but I think you may have just said exactly what I was saying, which is stop being a shy cunt and talk to people. I, okay, you know what? I'll rephrase that. I think you've just said what I've said in a much nicer way. <laughs> uh, thanks for emailing in. What else you say? P.S. Please come to someone in northern Queensland like Townsville or Cairns for your tour this year. Those are the only places I can see you. 
I'm I'm looking to take one step further regional in in the tour in September, but I'm still looking at it. We're just looking at dates and cities now. So the best way to make me come to your city is to sign up at loosespearscom slash gig list, enter in your city and your email. I look at that. I look at how many people have put in cans or Townsville or fucking whatever city it may be or country as well. Uh, and that's how I decided. There's like a thousand people that want me in fucking some city. I'll be like, okay, cool. I'll definitely sell tickets there. So I'll book a show there. So that's kind of how I pick where I'm going. PPS, the other night, I had a dream that you and Luke both came out as gay and had a wedding in my bedroom. I just wanted you to know that. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for emailing in. Um, yeah, stop being a shy cunt. Go and talk to people. It is something that you can definitely learn. Take it from me. I used to be an awkward cunt. I used to have no mates. Now I do have friends. I still struggle with it a little bit. Uh, mainly just with being a cunt on accident. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. I'm going to go and plan my radio show. Um, hope you enjoyed that episode of the podcast. If you did, consider supporting what I do on Patreon. It means you get early access to everything I do, and it gives me a budget to work with everything and pay video people and actors and editors and, editors and all that kind of shit. Makes my content better, and you get it a little bit earlier. Um, thank you very much. I will see you next Sunday. Have a very shit one.